Welcome to episode 24 of Bloggers Are Weird. I am your host, DJ Paris, from the blog, thoughtsfromparis.com, also the YouTube show, Osex with Karen and DJ, and lastly, author. I'm an author, sort of, of the book, Holy Crap, I'm Bathing in a Rose, The Best of Thoughts from Paris, 2012. Okay, now I just want to start out by saying my voice is completely shot for two reasons. One, I was at Blog Her the blog her conference all weekend and I've been partying, yelling, screaming, also learning, networking, hanging out with friends, etc. So my voice is completely done. But the other reason and more accurate reason on why it's done at this particular moment in time is because this, no exaggeration, I've been counting, is my 12th. (laughs) This is how bad I am as a broadcaster. My 12th attempt, attempt, (laughs) see, my 12th attempt to actually record this intro. I keep screwing it up. And instead of trying, I'm going to bare bones it this time. I'm not going to tell you my funny stories. I had all this cute stuff to say. Fuck it. (laughs) I'm just getting through this and getting to the interview. So I do want to formally apologize to my interviewee, who name is Michelle from olddognewtits.com. She's such a lovely person, one of my favorite people that I've met in the blogosphere. I actually thought I put this interview out, which we recorded some time ago. I thought I published it. I was convinced I published it. And then she said, hey, I couldn't find it online. Where is it? And I said, well, just go to my iTunes thing or look on my website. And she did and couldn't find it. And I said, well, it's got to be there because I never look at anything after I put it out. So I look and sure enough, I had completely forgotten to publish it. I feel like the world's biggest dick because uh, she's just been so polite that she hasn't said anything about it. And when I got to blog her, all of her friends (laughs) who are my friends too, completely started shaming me and saying, why is her thing not up? Why didn't you do that? And so I just, I had forgotten. So instead of me screwing up another intro, I'm going to stop talking because my voice is so screwed. I'm going to have to, what is that that musicians do? They get like tea and they put honey in it. And I'm a musician, you'd think I'd know, but I'm not a singer really. So whatever that is, I need for my voice. And I don't have the capacity to do this goddamn intro one more time. So grab some of that honey tea uh, or whatever your drug of choice is. I don't think I have honey tea, so mine's just water, which is really boring, but I need it to hydrate and get my voice back. Sit back. All right, don't screw up. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Today's podcast is sponsored by romance-text.com. Looking to reignite the passion in your relationship? You have to check out romance-text.com. This is how to use text messages to bring back the passion and reignite the spark you once had. Now, if you're thinking this sounds cheesy or maybe it's just learning how to send dirty text messages, it's actually not. This program by relationship expert Michael Fiore has been featured in over 200 television and radio shows. This program has a money-back guarantee. It's normally $97, but listeners of Bloggers Are Weird get a special price of only $47 for the entire program. By purchasing the program, you help support this show. Visit romance-text.com and get the passion back. But I I I didn't meet you, I guess. I guess I no, I definitely knew you, but for some reason I didn't see you there. And you I, had a I lot of start. women to meet. You had a lot of women to meet. It really was. <laughs> I mean, it, but it was it was fun. And did you end up making it to the aiming low party, the come as you are party? I did not. So I'll have to look for you guys. Are you doing it again in Chicago? Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. We did it with the um, the mouthy housewives. I don't know who's doing it this year, but. It's it's a lot of fun. The Aiming Low people really. I don't know if, if you're a reader, but I will. They really, I'll have to look into them. Last year was my first year, wow. so I went as a very, as a newbie and had no idea what I was doing. But it was a lot of fun. Oh, by the way, I'm speaking with Michelle from uh, Old Dog New Tits, one of one of my favorite named blogs. <laughs> and now you're down in New Orleans. Yes, I am. And you write a lot about New Orleans, and I'm telling you know what I've noticed is nobody moves to New Orleans. It's you're, you're I mean you're born there and you live there. Right. No, no one you know unless you go to college there, no one stays and no one goes. And it's it's because there's always tragedy. <laughs> well, we, you we have had so much. That. I can't believe how much tragedy you personally have endured. Um, it seems like there's always some tra- some major calamity going on down there for you. <laughs> 
Well, you know, we, we managed to get through it. I don't know. We just keep coming back. But you're right about New Orleans. And I will say, as far as the city, people love it or they hate it. And I do have friends that have moved here uh, and that love it. And they are such transplanted Yankees. And there are others that can't wait to leave. There's no in-between for your feelings about the city. You love it or you hate it. And I'm, I'm in uh, neck deep. So that's what it is, you know. Well, it's funny. I, I've never been there long enough to really form an opinion of it other than the touristy, fun stuff downtown sure. I mean, in, in the district. Like there's I haven't actually gone outside of that area where, you know, the, the cable cars run or whatever right. those are called. And so, you know, I, I've been to the, the university and that's about it. So I don't know what New Orleans. I mean, you know, uh, aside from what I saw in Treme, <laughs> right, um, I, right. I don't I don't know anything about New Orleans except there's there's a, uh, a a large population of people who listen to great music and um, you eat know, great food. Uh, eat great food and somehow you know the somehow don't get you know hugely obese. Right. Well, we have our share of fatties down here. I'm not going to lie, but uh, <laughs> we've got one of our biggest things all year is going on actually right now. The Jazz and Heritage Festival. It's a sure. two weekend uh, enormous, fantastic jazz fest. Um, with music from all over the world and all kinds of music. And it's just all day long and the food's amazing. And, you know, so, I mean, everyone talks about Mardi Gras, but uh, Jazz Fest is just huge and it's just getting bigger every year. So just a huge, huge event down here. I, I was down there once in between both of those festivals. Oh, really? It was just like the worst <laughs> possible timing. Yeah. And yeah, no, I'm a big fan of the meters, uh, the funky oh, yeah. meters. Yeah. They play jazz fest all the time, they probably do. still. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Neville Brothers. Absolutely. But, yeah. So anyway, um, so are you from New Orleans? I am. Born and raised. Uh, left about 80 miles away for college to LSU. You probably know it because of football. Sure. Uh, and wound up coming back. I really love it here. You know, there's a lot. I, I like to. I like the size of the city. It's not enormous, but it manages to be a world-renowned city nonetheless. And uh, it is a popular tourist destination. People love to come visit. I, I meet people when I travel all the time, and they always want to make a trip down to New Orleans. And they almost always do. We've hosted a lot of people down here before because it's just a really cool city to come check out. Yeah, I mean, I read Confederacy of Dunces. Uh -huh. few, and, and, that, and that was written way back, I think, in the late 60s. But it, it just painted such a great picture of New Orleans and the French Quarter and all of that and, and just uh, – I haven't been back in many years, uh, but uh, one of these days I'll come back. Let me know. Let me know. We're ready. Um, so did you pick something to read? I did. Um, I considered a lot of different blog posts, but I had to go with my number one post of all times, which humiliates the pants off of myself. But, you know, that's what the blog's all about, really. Well, you're a woman who dresses up in a ketchup Absolutely. costume. Absolutely. That's so. right. That, don't take yourself too seriously. By the way, did I, see a, did I see the photo? And I know I saw the photo with you and Pat Sajak. Uh -huh. But were you in the ketchup costume? I forgot. I was. I, we were in a bar in New York City, actually, at the last blogger convention. And um, Mel said, don't look now, but uh, Pat Sajak is right behind you. And I'm sitting there like an ass in my ketchup costume in a nice little bar on Fifth Avenue. Um, and, of course, when I tried to turn around and see him, I couldn't because the ketchup costume obstructs your peripheral vision. So I had to just stand up and make a complete ass of myself. And then, you know, we were five feet away from him. So he got into it. He took a picture with us. I tore the costume off and took another picture with him looking like a normal person. They're both on the same blog post, actually. Um, but it was fun. He, he uh, was a very good sport and about an inch taller than me, which makes him not very tall. Well, and he looks exactly the same as he did 25 years ago. He does. Oh. Very funny meeting him a good person to run into while wearing a ketchup costume. Okay, so uh, I will turn it over to you and go ahead and uh, read your post. Very good, thank you. Uh, I'm reading a post today called The Day Things Got Hairy at Disney World. Uh, anyway, um, so my friend Mel at AccordingToMags.com is getting back at me for making her publish a post with the word penis in it. Now, before you get all excited, hers is a very innocent story. When she initially told me about it, she had no intention of putting it in her blog until I pushed and pushed and then had a snack and went to check the mail and pushed a little more. Her post is a hysterical little account of her taking her young kids to see a movie, so you should look it up. Uh, and in my quest to push her out of her comfort zone, I may have inadvertently mentioned that I had a similar story involving my son from 2005. He was only five years old, kindergarten bound, and very observant. These three qualities ensure that all of the thoughts that crossed his mind also crossed his lips. And I was usually more than happy to answer any and all of his many, many, many questions. 
So anyway, my family was on its first trip to Disney World. It was the four of us. My son was five, my daughter two, as well as my parents. My kids had a blast and wanted to ride everything they could, but their age differential enabled my boy to take on a lot more of the rides than his sister. And he was still too young to know to fear the scary rides. Enter that stupid mission, mission space ride at Epcot. Now, first of all, I know what you're thinking. Mission Space? Michelle, are you nuts? He was only five. I can't believe you brought him on that terrifying shock to the nervous system. To which I can only say, yes. Well, sort of yes. Disclaimer, the tragic story involving that ride happened just six weeks after we were there. Truly, no one realized how intense this ride really was at this point. But I digress. So because my daughter was clearly too young for this ride, Dave opted to sit out with her. And my parents hung back with them. My boy was all excited about the space ride. So what's a mom to do, right? Of course, right. It was one of the newer rides at the park, so it comes with a tedious experience of waiting in a Disney line that weaves through a maze of snotty ropes, germy handrails, and darkened corridors intended to get us all in a spacey mood by the time we reached the core. After nearly an hour had passed, we got to the end of the line and waited in a small holding room with maybe 25-ish people to get into our respective pods. Can't you just feel the nerd? And we waited and waited and waited. Something was clearly wrong. There was a loud beep and everyone got quiet in anticipation of a voice coming over the PA to tell us what to do. We're all familiar with the expression, you could have heard a pin drop, right? Well, that's exactly how it was when my sweet little son, back then, always armed with a million questions, turned to me in the deafening silence and said, Mommy? And he paused, because clearly there was going to be more. I turned to my boy and I said, what? Expecting any number of predictable, mundane statements from my five-year-old, such as, I have to go to the bathroom. What's taking so long? I'm hungry. My tummy hurts. This shirt feels itchy. That guy sure has a fat belly. Any of those, and many, many other questions, by the way, would have been just fine. But that wasn't the direction he was going. Cut back to me. What? I said innocently. Nothing could have prepared me for this next moment as a parent. Why do you have so much hair on your vagina? Okay, you know that special effect that they have in cartoons where the character's eyes bulge out and you hear the old-fashioned Model T car horn blaring? Well, that was me. Me and everyone else in the room. Then, at the exact moment that my body was debating its fight-or-flight options, a voice mercifully came over the loudspeaker to announce that the ride was experiencing some kind of technical difficulty, or something like that. Honestly, I have no idea. My vagina had just been the topic of a small focus group. I was too busy picking up the shattered pieces of my dignity from the floor and trying to keep every ounce of blood from rushing to my face. Then somehow, I made it worse. I can't explain why I felt the need to defend myself to these strangers, fearing that everyone in the room would think me some sort of deformed, freakish, woolly mammoth and not understand, as any human should, that any hair there is foreign to a child. I found myself blurting out, "Uh, it's not that much really, to the room, and then hauling ass my boy in tow for the exit. I don't think I stopped until I reached the crawl space under my bed in the hotel room. And for the record, I have never told this story outside of very tight circles. Why? Because even to this day, I fear judgment. I'm hygienic and manicured, I swear. But a five-year-old boy with different parts than his mama is going to ask questions. I guess I should be counting my blessings that it, blessings that it wasn't in church. I am familiar with that post. I remember when, I remember when that went live. Yes, I think you commented on that one, actually. I, I probably did. Well, because when did you launch your blog? Uh, in August of 2012. So it's been, I guess, about a year and a half, going on two years. Yeah, that sounds that sounds right. And I, I don't know how I found it so quickly. Maybe you were... You were looking you, up tits, be honest. Well, I'm always looking up tits. <laughs> but, um, I, get a lot of, I get a lot of traffic that way, I'm not going to lie. And I think oh, people are probably oh, you, kind of disappointed. They're like, oh, this isn't at all what I expected. Do you, do you know what I, to be perfectly frank, I did get excited because I did, well, number one, I didn't know you were married right. and number two, you're, you're not an unattractive woman. And then number three, I thought something, the blog was something to do with like, and you have, well, you have that character that's drawn of you by someone mm-hmm. and it's like, it just makes you look really hot, even though it's just <laughs> a, a, cartoon. a cartoon, but, um, 
the yeah, I got really excited when I first saw your thing, and I was like, ooh, maybe she like just got implants yeah. or what's the deal? But yeah, t- can you talk about the origin of the, sure, of the title? Sure, sure. Well, you know, it is sort of it is rooted in boobs, actually. Um, I uh, am a mom of two kids, and you know, as most moms of two kids have, uh, you know, dissatisfaction with my post baby body, and I was looking into the idea of getting. Or boobs, actually, or something of that nature. And I had been considering a writing project of some sort. And I thought, you know what, what better way than to make an ass out of myself and just write about the whole thing in public form. And literally, thus was born the blog, Old Dog Sketch. That's where the name comes from. Um, and so the first several months of the blog were me opening up about, you know, not being happy with my body and why, and I know other people can identify with this, and literally going on five consultations with five different doctors and writing about it completely honestly. Sometimes it was funny. Sometimes it was, you know, uh, honest and embarrassing. Um, Along the way, uh, a breast lump was found. I had to get a mammogram and an ultrasound, and that turned out to be no big deal, thankfully. Um, And then as we got a little farther in, I had to get a chest X-ray because I was getting, uh, I guess, surgically prepped. Um, They just want to do like an all over physical and found a tumor on my lung, which was insane. Um, I'm extremely healthy. have never been in the hospital other than to have my kids, never broken a bone, never had anything go wrong ever. And I don't smoke. Um, But I had this crazy lung tumor that had to come out. So I wound up going, kind of changing the direction of the blog and live writing about CAT scans and MRIs and eventually the surgery. And I can, my parents and my husband, my kids, everybody, my friends were amazingly supportive with all this. And they knew that I was nuts and that even though I didn't want to immediately write about a tumor the day I found out that I had it, um, I felt compelled to do it. I said, no, you know, I made this commitment that I was going to be honest about everything and write about it sort of live time. And so I did. And I got incredible support from people I've never met in my life. Um, so it was it was a really interesting experience um, to go through. And needless to say, it kind of sidetracked me from my original plans. But I will say openly that who knows, uh, anything is still possible. I have a lot of great research out there. I have a friend that actually just used all my research to get her own new set. So I'm a little jealous. But, um you know, I'm not looking to be Pam Anderson. I just want to put my body back like it was before I had kids, and uh, we'll get there. But uh, we're just having some fun with the blog right now, writing about so much different kind of foolishness. You can't even, you know, it just uh, goes all over the place. So, but it's been fun. Yeah, I remember when it first started, it was just about getting the body back in, into the condition, and then, which was kind of exciting to read about <laughs> as, a, as a man. And then, um, and then it was. Uh, you know, and I remember the health scare and all yeah. of that. Now we I've done a baby food diet for five days. We've live stalked Alec Baldwin on Twitter. We've uh, written letters to toilets. It's, it's, it's no holds barred at the blog. <laughs> <laughs> talk, talk about, you know, one of the things that you've become known for is doing the, the link ups and the blog hops. And mm-hmm. many of the people who are listening to this have their own blogs and probably aren't as familiar. Um, not only with, with yours, but with those in general. Um, you seem to have a lot of fun with that. Could you talk about that? Sure. Well, there's a lot of great blog hops out there, and I try to find them all. I just sort of just find them all by accident, usually. And um, I try to get on as many of them as I can and encourage people to do the same with ours. There's a lot of, you know, blog hop, if you don't know, is where you take a post or maybe just your blog in general, but it's usually a post, and you link it up with a bunch of others on someone's blog, and it's a great way to, to boost your readership. Um, and a lot of them allow you to link previous things you've already written, which is great and easy. And you just find something that fits, you know, and throw it up that day. And then some ask you to write something based on different parameters. And Mel at of Megs and I, um, ha- that's what ours is. We actually ask you to write something, which, yes, is a little bit more complicated. But, geez, it's 57 words or less. And the 57 does come from Heinz 57 sauce. Um, but it's really short, and we try to make the um, – we do it twice a month. On the 1st and 15th of the month, catch up with us. And um, basically, we, we say it's like payday on the 1st and 15th, 15th of the month to help you remember. But, I mean, we've had some absolutely wacky um, blog – I mean, p- prompts for these things, like name something you're not 
thankful for was what our was what our Thanksgiving prompt was. And mine was my period. And I wrote a whole 57 or word less, 57 words or less post about my period and have a box of my in my mouth wearing a ketchup costume in a public store. So, you know, if I can put that in my mouth in the middle of the store wearing a ketchup costume, you can tell me about something you're not thankful for. 57 words or less, Mr. Paris. So come visit <laughs> us. <laughs> come I know us. I've. I've been bad. I, I, I do love your blog. And no. have you, you should write for Aiming Low. Have you ever, did you, wait, did you post something for them? I, I forgot. You, no, I didn't. And you had put something a while back. And I love your sense of humor, actually. You make me laugh. And that's not always easy to do. And I think you put something you were looking for writers a while back. And I said, hey, what's Aiming Low? And you said, use Google. Google's a great yeah. resource. And I thought, yeah, that's true. I should have not bothered him. But, um, but no, you know, I'd love to. And you're right. I do need to use Google and learn how to use Skype, which took us a while today. This this man's very patient. He worked with me today. Um, True. Yeah. Sorry. I'm a saint. <laughs> you are. Uh, to, to put to put it in a New Orleans <laughs> term. Sure. Uh, but no. So you know you've been writing and you've started going to conferences mm -hmm. and you've probably um, really opened up this whole line of communication. I know you have a few thousand. Oh, by the way, olddognewtits.com is where you can find her. Also at olddognewtits for Twitter and she has. A large Facebook fan following, just you know, search it when you get yeah. on Facebook. And you'll find Absolutely, it. thank you. Uh, and where is you know where where are you headed with the blog? Are you thinking about a book? Uh, you know, I would love to do a book. I'm lazy, and that's one of my biggest problems. I should probably say busy instead of lazy, but it's a little of both. Um, I'm I'm always following other writers that I like, yourself included, and seeing where they go with these things. And I've watched a lot of people successfully put books out there. Um, as you can see from my Skype knowledge today, I'm, I'm a little behind the eight ball in some of this information, but, um, but I'm working on it and I don't know exactly how it works, but I think it's fabulous. I've already written a few things already that I could even put out there. I, there's no stone unturned. I have a young adult novel I'm working on. I have a children's book I've already written. Um, but these things all need to be published. <laughs> uh, you know, that takes moxie on my part. So I'll get there. But uh, I would love to just do something with what I'm doing with the blog because that, that's the most fun that I'm having is just these goofy, you know, antics that, that I guess I think happen in everyone's life. But, um, you know, I, I, I had a spoiled gallon of milk that I complained to the dairy company about that in the end resulted in me visiting the dairy farm and having a, a baby cow named after me. So I have to think that these things don't happen every day and, you know, and they're interesting and people follow that. And I think I got the dairy company some new clients, but anyway, you know, it's fun. So I'd like to see something like that happen in the future. Sure. Well, I remember when, and this is probably, I would probably think about a year ago, you were doing a lot of those, uh, online photo album. Mm -hmm. You must have you must have done twenty five of those I did in a, a row. Lot. I did one for the, the for this uh, Disney story actually, and I I did another one um, that I think you helped me out with that I won a thousand dollars for. So that was that was oh that wow. was fun. Yeah, I think it was about uh, the ABCs of going back to school, and of course it was uh, yes. very unconventional ABCs. So um, you know, not for the children. I like I like the fact, and you sh we should talk about how to build a following because you certainly have a lot of readers, and uh, you know you have the. I think what a lot of bloggers get stuck is kind of how do I get in front of more more people, more eyeballs, and you know for me it's you got to just try a million different things, Absolutely. and and the biggest thing is to get involved in the community and really you know read other people's blogs and comment and. I, you know, I used to get a lot of readers from commenting on people like the blog S. I also yes. advertised for their. I agree. I, did Did you advertise for them? I forgot. I did. Yeah, I thought so. She's awesome. I I agree. And I got I got lots of readers commenting on her blog, and you can see where your readers are coming from usually, and uh, and from other blogs as well, not just her. But I did advertise with her for a year. Yeah, I did. I did for many months, and then uh, ultimately just just you know sort of got the following I was looking for. Well, you do that yourself now. You have advertisers, don't you? I do. I I'm do. I'm going to have yeah. to look into and, that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a special oh, price. Oh, awesome. Thank uh, you. No, no, it's, it's, it is weird. And then when you have advertisers, then you have this sort of strange relationship with people who like you because you now have to basically justify your cost to them. Sure. And, and it's not something you do verbally. It's something they look at their traffic and every month they go, was this worth X number of dollars? And, and, and many times it's not, you know, for them. And it just ultimately, you know, doesn't give them, 
you know, they have different expectations of, of what's realistic. You know, when you, when you advertise with the blog S, um, you get a ton of traffic, but you also pay a ton to do it. You do. And, and it's certainly, it was worth it for me, but, you know, coming to my little blog, which is, gets, you know, one, one hundredth of the traffic of hers, then, you know, she writes a post and gets 500 comments. I get, if I'm lucky, I get 15, sure. you know, and that's, and even getting 15 was a, it to me as a major accomplishment. <laughs> I know. I know. Like that's, it's, isn't it crazy when, when you write a post and you pour your heart out and you get zero or one or two comments you, and it's just. And then you write something else you think is, is idiotic and it resonates with a bunch of people. So. It, it is funny. Some of the worst stuff I've written and, and really just when I look at it, I kind of cringe a little like, oh, that yeah, wasn't very I'd good. I'd like to delete it's, that post. Yeah, you'd like to delete it. And it's maybe it's like for me, I write. Uh, I write a lot about like three or four topics and mm-hmm. I, I wish I didn't because, but it's just like, oh, I don't have anything else to write sure. about today. And oftentimes that stuff gets the best uh, response. Yes. So how, how, if you were, if you were uh, giving advice to somebody new, how would you suggest that they start to build their readership? Well, uh, it really is a lot of what you've said. I mean, advertising is wonderful, but really, it, and this is hard because you have to find the time to go around to other blogs and just get creative. But you know, to visit the blogs and absolutely comment on them. Make sure that your name and your link and everything is in there, and it's going to be. Um, you know, look at other people's blog roles even, because if you find a blogger that you really like, chances are the people in their blog role you're going to like as well. And so, you know, you might want to start visiting some of those. And there's some very um, supportive communities out there. I used to do a lot of writing, and I still do when I have time, for a writing community called Trifecta. And um, they've got a very strong following of people. And when you're in that circle, all those people are supportive of you. So, um, you know, it's good to find tight-knit groups like that. And, uh, you know, I, I would love to have more followers, but I will say this from the people that I have, they're extremely supportive. I have a, a close-knit group of people who I know are going to comment almost every time. And if I have a problem, they're going to offer me solutions. And they're just great people. But the best way to do it, like you said, is to get out there and to be as good of a reader as you are a writer, which – I'm not always good at. It. I'll be open, like I'll be open about that. But uh, I try. I really do try. Yeah, I'm the same way. I I have a, a group of people, the the I you know the the fans or whatever you want to call them, who really, really write or really read. And then I always feel like, oh my god, I'm not reading their stuff as much as I should. But sometimes I just can't. No. And I'm sure I'm sure they have the same issue when they. I forgive you because I'm just as bad. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Well, I, and, and I always operate out of the assumption that nobody reads my stuff anyway. Even though I look at my statistics, I know people do, but I don't expect anyone to read anything. So when I, whenever I meet somebody and they go, oh, I read that stuff, I'm like, really? You read that? You know, <laughs> it, it, it still sort of sh- surprises me. But you've, you've been a great example of two things, really, is putting your head down and writing. And you write a lot. And I think um, that is such a a a challenge for a lot of people and then you're also really involved in the community i mean you and i know uh, quite a few of the same people now and and i think going to the conferences is so important and um, it was cool to put faces to a lot of the words you know to to meet people last year i really like that oh totally Mm -hmm. and and it's um it's great to get involved and to be part of this community um any i'm trying to think i'm going to cut this right now part of it out. I'm trying to think if there's, is there anything else you wanted to talk about that we could uh, address? Ah, uh, gosh. Um, no, oh, I, I, go ahead. I was going to say, I have a question mm-hmm. with respect to, to boundaries. Do you set certain boundaries around topics that, you know, invade privacy or do you not really worry about that? Well, I tell you, I don't worry much about my own privacy um, because I figure I'm in charge of that. And, um, there has not been very much that I haven't touched on with myself. I still have a few uh, skeletons in my closet that I'll get to eventually. Um, I've, I've started writing about it a few times, and I'm like, nope, not yet. Um, but I am respectful of my kids. Um, some people probably would beg to differ, having heard my story. But that was my, my that boy is 13 years old now. Um, you know, and if something similar would happen, God forbid, I would never write about that now. It's a different situation, and. Um, there, you know, my daughter writes for my blog occasionally, but when she writes for my blog, she knows she's writing for my blog. And, or, or if I use something she's already done, she knows I'm using it. I would never embarrass them in that respect now, um, nor would I do this to my 
husband or my parents or anything of that nature, all of whom have been featured on the blog many times, my brother, my friends. Um, I have a couple of friends who are wild and crazy and are happy to be on the blog saying whatever it is that they're saying. I have others who have asked to, uh, me to use another name or please don't use that story. I, basically, I find, and you probably do too now, in my life, everyone knows that I write this blog. So when things happen to me, I'll have people either point to me and say, blog post or, oh, my God, please don't use that on the blog. And so, you know, I, I've kind of gotten a, a good feel for that. But, um, you know, I, like I said, no holds barred for myself pretty much because that's what this is all about. That's I think that's the crux of bloggers are weird, isn't it? It is. It's it's the the, the crux is that, you know, um, we we share a lot, but a lot of times we don't now because you've done uh, chats with your partner um, and you've done those video chats mm-hmm. I've seen. And I don't know if you've done one recently, but I know there was a time when you were doing them and it was like, oh, that's what she really looks yeah. like. It's not <laughs> just the, the green. Uh, right. The, oh, and, oh, and I remember once, didn't you change the font on your uh, on your blog to some just horrible <laughs> color? It was like it, unreadable. And yeah. you were like, what, what do you think of this? I was like, I can't read yeah. your blog. Now. No, I understand. And, Actually, I'm, I think I'm going to change. I've been thinking about our conversation about that and I've looked into a few new formats, but I think it's going to be like trying on clothes. I think we're going to try a few different ones of them over a few days, and I'll let people vote which one that they find the most readable. Because awesome idea, yeah. That's why awesome. not? And you know, but it was cool because I saw you and then your partner, and I wasn't familiar with your partner at the yeah. time. And then I, I'm sitting there, and I go, "Oh, that's what she looks like." Yeah. You know, she, she's adorable. She's a red, she's a redhead actually. You know, yeah. and um, and then there's always I like how you include your family a lot. There's always pictures of I. Do you have at least two brothers? I, Is no, that right? I have one brother. One brother it was all, he must live in New Orleans as well, or at least he's there he does. from time to time. He lived in Boston cause... for a long time, so we played with that for a while, unfortunately, recently. Um, but yeah, he lives close by, great uncle to my kids. Yeah, well, um, and so I just like how, like, I just know your parents more than you. I think <laughs> just sold their home yes. or their yeah. Thing. And uh, I, it's kind of cool. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, that's what's going on with her. And it, it's, it, but it's more intimate than you would get just on Facebook. You know, absolutely. You know, and and I love that. Well, this is like a journal for me, sort of. You know, it's not like it's a diary where I'm writing about every day and and chronicling things properly if I ever want to look back. But, like, I put a lot of pictures of my kids in there, even old pictures. And, look, it sounds nuts, but I went through Katrina, you know, and I lived in one of the neighborhoods that was completely flooded, not to get on that subject. But um, my point is that if I can put pictures in a permanent venue like this, because, you know, I'm not using the picture-sharing software or anything. This is my picture-sharing software then everything I put in here is something that I get to keep forever. And that's kind of cool. Assuming the internet doesn't crash anytime soon. Well, your blog has really evolved so much. I mean, you, I think when you first started, there wasn't a lot of, you know, you weren't, you didn't know a lot about some of the technology and it's amazing how much you've really embraced that and learned about it. I I mean, you have stuff on each one of your posts that, I mean, I don't do any of that, and, and it's, it's, I should. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I'm trying because I'm a spaz with this stuff, but I'm trying. I, I think all of us are that right are like, you know, kind of spazzes <laughs> to our families, to our, but it, it, we also, so we need the outlet of writing about it. Otherwise, we're just going to, you know, annoy, annoy the shit out of everyone. Absolutely. Who, you know, when, when, see, I live alone. Oh, I was going to mention one other thing that now that I'm dating this, are you going to write about it thing comes up every single date. I love that. I, I listened to one of your podcasts about that. That's a great idea. It is funny because I always say, no, I'm not going to write about this. But then just last night I made a video where I talked <laughs> about a date that I had. So I, I typically I don't, but, um, but then, you know, I do have boundaries, like you said, around certain things where I just wouldn't want to share or I'm not ready to share. Sure. And those could always be good for, I guess, a future book or, oh, yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. Well, right. You can't give it all away. <laughs> Once again, if you want to follow Michelle, go to her blog, which I, has my highest possible recommendation, olddognewtits.com. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, have you ever gotten in any sort of, not, not trouble so much, but has anyone ever, because you are a mom, has any of the other uptight moms ever kind of you know, thumb their nose at that? Um, I have been turned down from a few directories and a few blog hops. Um, because I guess of the word tits mostly, um, you know, or, or just, I, look, I can't look at my own blog in the public library cause it's flagged as porn, which is hysterical to me. Um, so yeah, you know, some people are a little bit funny about that. And, uh, I do have a whole blog post actually too, cause it, it was a two part series 
on some hate mail that I received. I mean, I use the term loosely. It wasn't, it wasn't strong hate, but on some hate mail that I received from a, from a dentist that found me on Twitter. Um, so, you know, but I, I believed in making lemonade out of lemons and wrote a blog post about him. And, um, and yes, I did date him. So I'm not that appropriate. <laughs> well, I always like, uh, how, when, uh, when, when people are, it, it's, you know, they're critical. They, they, you know, they read every word Absolutely. and it's, it's, it's amazing. And in some ways, I, I, I secretly love those people. Like part of me, well, yeah. I don't have too many of those, but I have a few. I have one guy who says the same thing every time. If I, if I write something and I you know, miss, misspell or, or put a comma in the wrong place, he always says, do you not proofread your stuff? Why am I continuing? Why would I read you if you don't even proofread your stuff? But he reads every word I write. So the threat is, is non-existent. Please write but, a, a post riddled with grammatical errors. Please do well, that. he's just the most, <laughs> like, I want to I profile this guy. Yeah. I want to talk to this guy. He fascinates me, and I'm secretly jealous. He's your next podcast. Uh, he could be. Well, anyway, I, Michelle, I really appreciate your time, and I will see you this summer at Blogger. Also, if you uh, are going to Blogger, I would love to meet you. I'm sure Michelle would yeah. love to meet you. You know, find us on Twitter and uh, direct message us. And uh, she's again olddognewtits.com and also at olddognewtits. So Twitter her. We we love uh, comments on blogs, twittering us. Tell us what we should be reading, yeah. and if it's you or anyone else. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you, DJ. So, yeah, we'll say goodbye, Michelle. Goodbye, Michelle.